I've been in Vegas a few days now and a lot of people message me and ask me why do I always like to come to Las Vegas even in the summer is it just because of the food which of course Las Vegas is known for and the answer is yes but I feel like it, it goes a little deeper than that Vegas to me is about the food but also a kid from the Midwest who's really never experienced much in his life didn't have much money at all and coming here to buffet capital where chocolate fountain wishes and all you can eat dreams it's always left a really warm and good feeling in my heart which is kind of weird to say about you know Sin City but to me Vegas has that effect and today's gonna be another great fruit day I found this hole in the wall Xi'an place that I have a really good feeling about going to a conveyor belt Korean barbecue meeting one of my good friends over there but none of that begins until 11 that's when the first place opens in eight o'clock right now so breakfast there are a lot of breakfast options in las vegas obviously sometimes I just want to save my stomach for the heavy hitter food options later in the day i just have something light in the morning so i bring a couple of these boxes with me when i travel mm. and i love mixing the cocoa with the peanut butter I've told you guys about my cereal addiction, how much I love cereal going up. If I go to a buffet, even the buffets here in Vegas, if I see a cereal station, I'm getting a bowl of cereal. But I'm also realistic, I'm getting older, I can't keep eating all that empty carbs and sugar. And I've actually found out about Magic Spoon before they reached out to me about a potential partnership. I mean, the cereal, zero grams of fat, 14 grams of protein, four grams net carbs, and only 140 calories per serving. I told you guys before, when I'm back in New York, this is pretty much my dinner every single night. I need the protein, and I don't want these to be flabby. This thing not only tastes great, but it's gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, no GMO, and if you're on the keto diet, it's keto-friendly. They got great flavors like the original frosty, fruity, peanut butter, and cocoa, and they do limited time flavors all the time, like cinnamon and blueberry, and what I really love about this is they have a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like this for whatever reason, get your money back. If you want to give this a try, go to my link down below. You can build your own variety box and use my promo code Mikey Chan. You'll get $5 off. Again, link down below. Use my promo code Mikey Chan. We'll just go to magicspoon.com slash Mikey Chan. Get $5 off. All right, I'm going to eat breakfast. I'm going to sit by the pool some more. And then I'm going to show you a place that might just have some of the best noodles in Las Vegas that I really don't think a lot of people know about. first real meal of the day. And I love exploring these plazas. Chinatown really expanded since the first time I was here. It seems like it goes miles upon miles. And it's not just Chinese food. It's Thai food, there's Vietnamese food. So there are a ton of these little plazas that are distinctively shaped. They seem to just have countless eateries. Oh, all you can eat sushi. Another all you can eat. There's like two all you can eat sushis right next to each other. Anyway, first meal of the day. This is a hole in the wall place that I don't think many people know about at all but hopefully their food is good and we're gonna put them on the map what's up jesse what's up? you ready for breakfast i'm ready i'm so hungry we're gonna be eating at da dango xian feng wei big brother dan xian food well xian's where i'm from you guys know that so xian food wait there it is so this place when i was looking it up it didn't have an hours of operation i didn't even know if this place was gonna be open they play the chicken, liang pi, you got the yang rou pao mo, you got some noodles. It does feel right off the bat very homey um, eating at a place like this because the chef is from Xi'an, my hometown. So I'm asking him what's good. And he's just basically saying like listing off all these Xi'an favorites like the lamb pita soup, the bian bian noodles, the cold wheat noodles, the pork burgers. So these are all classic Xi'an dishes. He's asking me like, he's like, what do you want to drink? And the number one thing we drink in Xi'an, I told you guys, is like when we we're kids, is drink bing feng, is this orange soda that we love over there. Not a lot of people know about this place. I really don't think. I think it's a very local place. <sighs> classic dish number one wheat noodles so basically every city i go to i seek out food like this because you know obviously this is my childhood food this is what i grew up on and it's something i truly miss every single day i could eat this stuff every single day i would be happy you don't find these places a lot even in the u.s there's like maybe a few places in new york all the major cities and you don't usually find something truly that authentic all right jesse you gotta have some gluten this is pure gluten Oh, that's good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Have you had this before? Um, I think I have, but it's really good here. It's super chewy. 
Mm, and it's a little vinegary. And it's actually not too spicy. I'm always afraid to try this because this is the first sign I'll know whether a place it's is good or not. It's really good. Right. You taste the chilies. Mm. <clears throat> that burn is actually a really, it's not overly mm. fried. So you don't get that burnt um, flavor from the chilies. It hits you at all the right places, you know? It's like if you just kind of made out with that mini cactus, it, it kind of hurts you a little bit. But not too much. Perfect use of vinegar, great seasoning, texture is fantastic. This is really, really good. Wow. This place is going to get hit hard with people soon, I'm sure. And they'll deserve it because. That alone is a really good dish. This is a classic Xi'an dish. This is called a lamb pizza soup. So in Xi'an, basically what happens is that you don't even get this served to you like this. You get two toasted buns and you break it with your fingers as small as possible. The most important thing about this dish, the classic condiments for this dish, is not the hot oil like many people think. It's not. It's actually these types of chilies with a little garlic in there. So it has a little sourness to it, a little garlic flavor. And the tang suan, the pickled garlic, is a must-have condiment when eating this because this dish is gonna get kind of fatty, so you need to cut all that down with that. And also, of course, it needs to have the cilantro, all this stuff. So I'm just gonna take the tang suan, the pickled garlic, put it aside for now. And I'll usually eat like 20 cloves of this stuff. And the rest, I'm just gonna dump in there. So cilantro goes in, and then the chili sauce, which is, oh my God, I kind of did this horribly, but it is what it is. I'm a messy eater. And then you mix it all together. You gotta get that chili sauce in there. And then let me uh, do this real quick. So this is the yo po mian. This I featured a lot, bian bian noodles. What we also call in Xi'an belt noodles because they're the width of a belt. You put the dried chilies, garlics, scallions on top, flash fry with hot oil. And this is a vegetarian dish. So for all you uh, vegans out there, this is a really good dish for you. Super authentic, no meats involved. So there's vinegar and soy sauce on the bottom along with some sprouts and bok choy, of course. And as soon as you start mixing this together, you, you're gonna smell the great aroma from the chilies, the scallions, the garlic. This is another classic Xi'an dish. Final one is this. This is the rou jia mo. This is the pork burger. I featured this a lot on my show. I even have a recipe for this. I'll put the link for my recipe down below. First thing you look at is the spots. And then it's supposed to be crispy on the outside, soft on the inside, and just piled high with slowly braised pork. Wow, this is what I'm talking about. Usually the meat is dry a little bit. This dish, it, the meat's gotta be super juicy because the bun's gotta soak in all that juice and fat from the pork. So you take it, and you squeeze it a little bit, you, it's gotta ooze juice. Otherwise, this thing is just not good enough to eat. And this you will eat with the liang pi. Wow. This is great. This is great. Super authentic pork burger. The bun is tremendously toasty and thin. And of course, the juice is just on stoppable oozing out from inside and what you do with this because this is very fatty you take it and you dunk it and don't worry if some of the meat spills out you dunk it into the liang pi sauce so it gets you some vinegar some chili oil soaked into your bun take a bite of that chase it with some liang pi if your life didn't just get better from that one bite, you might already have the perfect life because that thing will improve your happiness level, improve your mood, it'll improve your appetite. This might have been one of the best combos I've had anywhere. This place right here. Wow. Jesse, you're gonna love this. Oh my gosh. So good. So good? Now dunk it. Now chase it, chase it with that. Take a bite, take a bite of the noodles. Chase it with the noodles. Bring it home, Jesse. 360 with this dish. Mm, I love the vinegar. Mm. Let me try the bam bam noodles. Highly recommend coming to this place. You guys will love it. Come and try this place. This is some of the best Xi'an food I've had outside of Xi'an. It is really that good. Everything I've had is just super on point. So this is the bing feng 
It's called Ice Peak in English. This is what we, we used to drink as kids in, in China. And this is what you're supposed to drink with this meal. This is the other thing. This is called a Suan Mei Tang. It's basically like a plum. It's a sour plum juice. And sour plum is something we love in Xi'an as well. Mm. I think they homemade this. This is really good. This is the ultimate testament, this dish, because I really haven't been to a place that made this dish correctly. Awesome. Jesse, this yeah. is my favorite Xi'an place I think uh... I've ever been to. This is so good. It's a little gamey, which these things are sometimes. You chase it with the pickle garlic. We call it tang suan, which means like sugar garlic. It's a little sweet. Don't eat the wrapper. Oh, the wrapper? Mm-hmm. Don't eat the wrapper. Take a bite of that, then chase it with this. Oh my god. This is so good. This is like home for me. The lamb is so tender too. This is 100% a local place. You saw like nobody was reviewing this anywhere on any of the review sites. And everybody here is 100% mainland Chinese. Supermarket. The secret is out. You guys know where to go. We're in Las Vegas. I'm happy for the chef. He's like, he's, he's, his food is fantastic. He deserves it. Yeah, oh yeah. He's been here for three years. He might need to open a second location now. This is like really, really good. Highly endorse it. Try this. This is something you never tried before. Mmm, so good. Now try it with the garlic. Now, now put the thing in your mouth. There you go. Looks really pretty good. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That's a must-have combo. And I normally don't eat garlic like this. Yeah. This soup seems like it's been cooked forever. And taste the lamb that's in there. Good. Right? Mm. That's tender. I can't believe I've been to Vegas all these years. I've been here like definitely twice, at least in the last three years. Never even caught wind of this place. Well, that's what my job is, is uh, making sure I find the best places for you guys. This is it. Now we're gonna just polish everything off. Excuse us a minute. This is the best food I've had with you in the last couple of weeks. So Vegas is apparently now full of all you can eat sushi places, all you can eat barbecue places. But so Jess, you've been to like a all you can eat revolving sushi place, right? Mm -hmm. What about all you can eat revolving K barbecue place? I have place? not done that before. Yeah, that? Does that sound exciting? <laughs> anyway, this place is it. They, they're, I think they're the only place that has revolving all you can eat Korean barbecue. I wonder what that's like. Let's go check it out. First of all. It's not a rotating bar, it's conveyor belt yeah. barbecue. Okay, so the $25.95, so you get a Black Angus Colby, that's limited to one, one steak. Okay, that's pretty good for that. And then all you can eat, brisket, beef tongue, your favorite. Bagogi, large intestine, your favorite. Oh, my favorite. Wow, we don't even need to get the more expensive menu. Kurabota pork belly, pork jiao. So the biggest difference between the cheapest and the most expensive is the snow short ribs and the one extra ribeye steak. Well, I'm just gonna tell you if they're worth it or not. By the way, we are at Master Kim's Barbecue. They got two locations here in Las Vegas and this one's like on the outskirt. This is past the Las Vegas sign where you see it says, welcome to Las Vegas, kind of past that sign. Convertible Korean barbecue. I'm excited. So the main waters, we want uh, the snow boneless short rib. Let's do the ribeye steak, beef brisket. Yeah, let's, let's do that for now. We're gonna do two thick pieces of the meat and then Two thin pieces of meat. Let's get corn cheese. You got cold noodles? Yeah. Yeah, cold noodles, please. How big are they? Are they like good so size? It's gonna be like your salad. Okay, let's just do one cold noodle. Yeah. Starting with some cheesy set of corn. And if you ever go to a Korean barbecue, you walk in and there's just corn and no corn and cheese. It's okay to judge them a little. And to prepare for the barbecue, cold bowl of noodles. That's good. That's really good. Cold noodles, excellent. Still, gotta add the vinegar. I'm just gonna add it all. I love vinegar. You like vinegar, right? I love vinegar. And I love mustard. Me too. You do? Mm -hmm. All right. See, this is why me and Jesse eat together. Oh, 
Yo, that's perfect. Oh, this is so good. Now, this thing is ready for barbecue. There's just something fundamentally exciting when your meat is arriving on this little silent train. This is just really fun. We're starting off with these four cuts of meat. We got the brisket, we got the tongue, we got our ribeye steak, and we got, these are the snow short ribs. Yo, Jesse, I like fire. I don't even care if it burns our meat a little bit because these stem pieces of the meat, they're better when it's a little burnt. Oh yeah, now it's like nice and crispy and toasty. This is perfect. Okay, try the tongue, see if it's, uh, see what you think. It's chewy, but mm -hmm. it's not, that, not too chewy. It's a good chew. Delicious. Really good. Really good. No, that tongue is nice. It is. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. The last place we went to, the tongue was a little chewy. No, this is really good. Really thin meat. I love how the brisket has got gray marbling. Let's do the steak and the snow ribs. This looks like a good piece of steak, by the way. Put that in the snow short ribs. And look at that marbling. Okay, look at their bibimbap. Bibimbap is not something I typically get at Korean barbecues, but they told me this is something they specialize in, so why not? Jess, you're gonna like this. This is really good. We should be focusing on meat, but it's crunchy. The flavors are incredible. It's spicy, great sesame flavor. You know I love carbs. This is so awesome. Mm. The sauce is everything. That comes with the buffet. Again, like that's probably not gonna be the most value added item, but it's really good. Steak is ready. I got distracted by the bibimbap, so I think the steak is a little overcooked right now. That's my bad. You should never let food distract you from other food. That's like the art of eating 101, but it happens to me, and I failed Jesse and myself. All right, we gotta eat this quick because it's, it's, the steak is dying. Eh, still not too bad. The food gods were good to us. <laughs> nice. Mmm, that's a ribeye. That's very good. Very tender. That's a short rib. You'll like it after like the fifth chew. You won't like it after the first chew. You'll like it after the fifth chew. When things start breaking down your mouth. You feel it? Mm. It's so xiang. It's so fragrant. The reason I say the fifth bite is when you first put it in your mouth, you're like, oh, I don't think it's as tender as the ribeye. But when you chew it, the faster start breaking down, the marbling start melting on your tongue. That's when the love affair begins. Oh, this is really good. If you go to places like Los Angeles, where basically anywhere else, you go for an all-you-can-eat buffet. If steak is included, it's usually around $40 to $50. Here, $35 for steak and the short ribs and everything. That's pretty good value. So far, loving the conveyor belt Korean barbecue experience. Mm. You're a skeptic of what? Korean barbecue. Oh, you can eat? No, yes, because it has to be really good for me to like it. And this is really good. Are you full now because you ate all the noodles and rice? Yes. <laughs> so overall, 
I think the menu items, my favorite thing, the snow short rib. That, the ribeye, I think is what's really worth it for me for the more expensive menu items. Otherwise, I'm really good with thin brisket with the tongue, like the really thin meats. Love that. So if you don't care about like a really nicely marbled short rib, which I don't know why you wouldn't. Or if you're like Jesse, and if you want to just get the thin sliced meat, the tongue, you're good with that. I think the cheapest menu is pretty darn good already. The brisket's my favorite, and the tongue. But overall, I think this is a really good place. I like how, how the food comes to you, that whole experience. I like the meat quality, the service is excellent. Definitely get the cold noodles. The bibimbap is fantastic. Shared around the table so you can still have room for the meats. But overall, good buffet and a fun experience. All right, good barbecue. And uh, my buddy Daniel Plasman just joined me. How's it going? Dude, you guys don't know. One of the most awesome bands out there, Imagine Dragons, you're the drummer. How That's right. That? I've been dragoning for it's coming up on Wait, 10 is that, years now. is that a verb? It is now. Dragoning? <laughs> All right, and you got your own album coming out. You know, this pandemic gave uh, a lot of artists a lot of time mm -hmm. to make a lot of bad decisions, and in my case, it gave me enough rope to hang myself with, and I put together a whole collection of songs. I don't know when it's gonna be released, but it is on the horizon, people. I can definitely tell you what's going on is Imagine Dragons has two singles out right now, Cutthroat and Follow You. Check those out. And we have an album dropping soon. So stay tuned for more news on that. I've been a big fan. And also, uh, me and Daniel, we're on this board of this amazing nonprofit called Culture City. So definitely check that out. It's uh, helping so much with people with autism. and uh, Anyone with uh, sensory, sensory processing disorders about a community of inclusion yeah. and creating a culture of acceptance. I'll put some information and also information about your new album dropping in in the uh, Please. description box below, but great eating with you, man. Dude, I always appreciate the uh, the recommendation. This you was can, tasty. You can always put it down, so <laughs> always happy to hang with you. Yum, yum. Would you stay till the morning light? Or would you follow me? Or would you let it be? If I leave tonight, we could do this right. We'll find the remedy. Or would you stay with me now till the morning light? Uh, so every day, Jesse gets a recommendation restaurant, and we are at hers right now. This is your place. I picked this place. What is it called? Uh, Mott 32. Why did you pick this place? Because they have really cool soup dumplings. They're hot and sour soup dumplings. You like fancier stuff than I do. Fanciest place we went to on our time together in Los Angeles was a very fancy, schmancy, Michelin star Taiwanese meal, which was really good. It was really good. So I'm trusting you that this is gonna be good too. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. So the soup dumpling is hot and sour soup dumpling. And then the spring roll is a duck spring roll. The pork bun is Iberico pork pork bun, so the best quality pork there is. And this is a quail egg shomai with truffle on top. Okay, these are interesting dishes. All right, Jesse, go ahead. Gotta try the soup first. Ooh, it's spicy, you're gonna like it. Well, it's really good. I like the fact that it's sitting on this little little cradle thing. Like you can just take your dumpling and take it for a swing, rock it around if you feel like uh, babying the, the dumpling a little bit. I'm not taking it off. I feel like it's gonna break. It's gonna take a bite. Oh, soup is good. It's not a typical hot and sour soup. It's actually a very spicy and peppery version of the hot and sour soup. Soup is really good. I'll give you that. A little vinegar. It's pretty good. I feel like the dough could be a little thinner. Chili and the flavor's on point. The ginger is nice. The spice is really nice. Only complaint, dough is a little thick. Tiny bit doughy. That's about it. Duck spring rolls. Okay. I don't taste the duck. I just taste... Fried. The, the, the fried outside, which is nice. It tastes like the vegetables. You don't taste the duck, right? Delicious. Mm -hmm. It's runny inside the shomai. So you get this nice soft boiled koi egg inside the shomai. That is really, really good. That's good. Yeah, very big fan of that. This is what they call the best pork bun. So far, the best pork bun I've had was from Tim Ho One in Hong Kong. Okay. Now it's this. It's actually fried on the bun. This, this is my favorite pork bun, yeah. Oh my goodness, that's delicious. Right? Mm. That is 
truly exquisite. I can't believe how light this is. Crunch on the bottom is just a work of art. Like it's just like someone taking like a fine brush and coating just the bottom, like just making it perfectly crunchy. The soft is just like a cloud. And actually, we have your Iberico pork with yellow mountain honey. Yellow mountain honey. Yes. It's way better yeah. than it looks. Yeah, it looks like really white. Wow, that's a masterpiece. A barrel pork char siu with yellow mountain honey. I feel like uh, yellow mountain honey is something you get from the Lord of the Rings or something. When you go to the lonely mountains, on the left, you'll get the yellow mountains where the best honey in Middle Earth reside. And then you can make a char siu. That's crazy good. Mm, that is really, really tender. This pork is just a work of art. So tender. Mm. That's one of the most tender pieces of cha I've ever had. I do have to say though, if you're gonna eat that, you have to eat it with tea, because it's very sweet. I think it's almost a dessert. It's like a dessert meat item. It falls apart. It does fall apart. Very, very good. Smoked codfish. Whoa, that's, this thing just fell apart on me. Incredible. It's like you're eating fish in a smoker section at a restaurant, <laughs> but in a good way, in the best way possible. Mm. Skin melts in your mouth, the fish melts in your mouth. Not overly sweet, very smoky, delicious. You need some tea or rice or something to eat with that, I think. It's very flavorful, very good. And this is the crab noodles, right? Crab noodles with fish eggs? Mm -hmm. I think the flavor is it's okay, but the texture is what I really like. The pop in fish eggs. I don't really taste the crab that much, but the fish eggs, very impressive addition to that dish. Not this, super flavorful. Yeah, you don't taste the, the seafood flavor that much. I think this is a really good place. I would recommend it if you're into some fusion style Asian food and uh, the service is pretty impeccable. The tea is very nice. This is a very good um, dessert meal for our day. Good to wrap everything up. We did get some dessert, you know, the pork is, and the fish are basically kind of dessert items here. We don't really need to go get some ice cream after. <laughs> what if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. Mm -hmm. Maybe the birds will. Oh sing. man, just got up here and this thing is closed because of the wind. The trees will whisper the word. Maybe the sun. Well, not exactly how I wanted tonight's end, but. At least the view is nice. Still a good day. Gotta see some old friends, have some good food. And as always, all the places I went to, listed down below for you. And until we eat again. <laughs>